Guys, I am just gutted. I did not stay up to watch another robbery last night. Just as I didn't watch that Warrington Lada 2. Okie doke. So gutted. Look at Canelo over there. Roid raging. <laughs> oh man, where do we begin here? How about we start by not getting my video taken down? So, immediately, right off the bat, what I noticed was, well, the guy on the right who used, allegedly, a uh, weight-cutting agent or fat burner, presumably to make weight for the fight, right? Being there in the ring with someone who's significantly bigger than him and clean. <laughs> right, because, well, Valdez is a lazy motherfucker and the other guy, he just, he just works harder, right? He's got, he's got them genetics. <laughs> oh my God. 99% of people out there are zombies. Boxing fans are zombies. Well, boxing fans are people too, right? And it's hilarious to me how the virtue signal and, and attack these people with the herbal teas or whatever. When I mean, you know, just take a look around, right? Take a look around. The guy who is supposedly better the more highly touted fighter, right? And right into the gills. Is losing to, uh, you know, this kind of a nobody getting dominated. But that guy, even though he's bigger, right? And the smaller guy was taking substances to make weight. He's the clean one. Yeah, okay. I mean, if we're going to agree that drug testing is weaponized, right? Why couldn't it be weaponized against Valdez? And just because drug testing is weaponized against him, that doesn't mean that they're not going to rob the guy, the other guy, right? It's pretty confusing, isn't it? Well, but that's what you want to do if you want to control outcomes. Confuse people so they never let you, s never, never let them see you coming, right? So they don't see you coming. So they don't understand what's going on. And what's going on, in my opinion, still, is Oscar Valdez being set up for Shakur, who looks really, really nervous facing off with Herring, because it's his first major step up. He's finally fighting fighting a real one, right? So they got to make Valdez, if he is, to you know get that gift decision over Herring, and to fight Valdez, which is the fight they want, right? To, uh, quote-unquote, undefeated. <laughs> Oh, this is fun for me. I don't know about you. Right? Uh, Shakur needs to be confident. Valdez needs to look like shit. Right? He needs to be cleaned up. Shakur needs to be souped up. And then we're going to, you know, and then Shakur can actually win that fight. So, that's my hypothesis and we're stuck, still sticking to it. But insofar as this fight goes, I mean, if you gave Valdez three rounds in this fight, okay. But I mean... He got outworked. Now, I heard it said that he got schooled. I didn't see a schooling because, to me, a schooling would be where you, you know, completely control your opponent. Uh, you set him up for stuff. You take advantage of his mistakes, right? Make him miss, make him pay, that sort of thing. I didn't really see much of that there. It was just pretty basic uh, type stuff that... Everyone who has an 8-inch and reach and 4-inch reach advantage on Canelo should be doing to him, right? Really basic boxing one-on-one -on -one type shit. Just every inch he steps forward with his slow feet, Canelo. You take an inch step back, right? If it's 2 inches, well, then you do 2 inches. So on and so forth. And just control him with con control the distance between you. That's it. It's really simple. That's what should have been happening to Canelo, and it kind of was, a little bit, even though 
Sergei was sucking on purpose and giving up range. But that's kind of what happened to Canelo versus Sergei. And that should have been 12 rounds for uh, Callum Smith against Canelo. It should have been easy work, right? Canelo would have had to pull a, a Mike Tyson to beat him, right? Just as Oscar Valdez had to pull a Mike Tyson to beat someone like Jose Canseco over here. Let me take a sip of my coffee. But uh, neither Canelo nor Valdez are Mike Tyson. Um, and Valdez isn't as beloved by the system because he doesn't bring that kind of money in. That's why he's fighting some Podong casino on an Indian reservation. Uh, as Canelo is, right? So it is what it is. <laughs> But they're both allowed to juice, and you know, Valdez is—he's a pretty big fish, but they got bigger fish to fry. Top rank does, in my opinion. So we'll see what happens. Anyway, um, and if that analogy didn't make sense to you, well, it didn't make much sense to me either. But you get the point. So let's talk about the wonderful commentary from the very experienced professional and expertly top rank team shout out to timmy who clearly heard the buzz whatever tiny little buzz my stupid little video created about the size of his head right it got repeated in some other videos and someone probably tweeted something well i did at timmy <laughs> Definitely, it got around to him. He was talking about his monster, big ass monster head, right? It's not right, guys. It's not. It's just. It's just naturally big. It's just like that. Yeah, you going ahead, Timmy? How are you going to tell us that you want to see this guy lose, right? And then when it, oh, well, maybe that's what it was, right? Because then when it comes to commentating, you acting like he's winning when you said you wanted him to lose, right? And then he's losing the fight clearly, and you're talking as if he were winning. I thought you wanted him to lose. But this is what, what I keep talking about on live streams, right? I'm the biggest Pacquiao fan, will say someone who isn't. But I had him losing that fight, right? Oh, oh, I love Triple G. But he did not beat that Evgenchenko. Right? This is reverse. I want him to lose. Oh man, I really, I really wanted him to lose, but I just couldn't give it to the other guy because Valdez was just that dominant. <laughs> you see, you see how they, how they do you. They don't want, and it works for the zombies. They don't want you to see them coming, right? Let me take another sip of my coffee. But let's talk about some some of these brilliant pieces of commentary. According to Bernardo Osuna. Because Conce Conceição, <laughs> oh, Portuguese is, is a really, really beautiful language. Uh, wait, what did he say? Apparently, I think it was maybe fourth or fifth round or something like that. The implication was right, even if he didn't say that verbatim. Bernardo Asuna seems to think that Conseco lost the fight, right? Because he showboated for three seconds in one of the rounds. At least that's what he thought at the time, right? I know he showboated a little bit more in the 12th round, right? Because he thought he had this shit sewn. I thought, well, he won the fight, but he didn't have it sewn, obviously. So, that that's the implication, right? <laughs> The difference in the fight was him showboating. <laughs> Which is not a scoring criteria, right? Just like cutting off the ring is not a scoring criteria. Obviously. Well, to the one percenters. Shout out to all the one percenters out there. Okay, let's be generous. Five. Five percenters. Oh, boy. So, that was pretty brilliant. Bernardo. We already talked about Bradley's... Uh, him being self-conscious about... His huge fucking head. HGH. Horns. Release those medical records, Timmy. Let's see them. Yeah, right. 
Then there's Andre Ward saying that, um, what the fuck did he say? I, I should have taken notes. But um, one of the latter rounds, he was saying that Canseco, oh, he's making it look like he's, and this isn't verbatim, but this was the implication, if not said so exactly. Uh, Canseco is, he's making it look like he's in control, but he needs not make it look like he's in control. He has to be in control, okay? So just because he looks like he's in control, that doesn't mean he is in control, right? Just because he's winning the fight, that doesn't mean he is winning the fight. He actually has to be winning the fight. Did you get all that? I mean, in other words, for the 95%, what's the difference between doing it and making it look like you're doing it in a sport where you're being judged on w what it looks like, right, to, to you? right <laughs> it's the sport is judged it's which is subjective it's not measured it's judged so if you're making it look like you're in control and then that's what gets scored right if you're making it look like you're landing the better punches then do you are you not also landing the better punches right in other words now maybe if we were able to connect some kind of power measuring apparatus to each one of the fighters, right? And actually measure the power of the punches. The story might be different, but that's boxing isn't measured. It's judged. If you're making it look like you're in control, then to the judges, you are in control. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant piece of mind fucking by Andre Ward, right? Brilliant. Just fucking brilliant. What else did he say? I think it must have been like the 10th round where for the first... 50 seconds or so, it looked like Canseca was the only one throwing and landing punches. Maybe, maybe uh, Baldas got some punches off, but he was mostly just getting beat on. Not, not a whole bunch was landing, but he was getting outworked and some were landing, right? And right off the bat, Timothy Bradley, while Canseca is the only one working and the only one landing, really, he says something along the lines of, oh, he really needs to do something, right? For for about a minute, the first minute of of the round, he was saying, "Oh, he just needs to s step up. He needs to um. He's giving it away. That's what he said. He's giving it away, and he really needs to do something. And then finally, he said, like at the end of almost at the end of that minute of him uh, trying to brainwash and mind fuck the audience, right? Finally, he says, "Just, just or kind of like he's doing now, which is what he did for you know, the first almost the first whole minute of the round and Valdez was the one who needed to do something right I mean and they just went on and on and on bamboozling and brainwashing and talking nonsense making up scoring criteria right showboating is is, is a point automatic point deduction because it's it's a scoring criteria or at the very least it's a foul I guess showboating is now a foul oh and then another piece of brilliant commentary by Andre Ward trying to justify how he was ever able to beat Sergey. First to second fight doesn't fucking matter. He never did. Obviously, he lost by DQ. And all of you know this. Shout out to the 95 percenters. All of you understand know this. You're just fucking demoralized. And we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, but first, we're going to finish talking about the demoralized commentary by the demoralized team uh, looking to also demoralize those that aren't or looking to feed into the demoralization of those that already are. Andre Ward saying that, you know, if you're a hometown fighter and you land one good punch, the judges are going to uh, judge that. As, they're going to act as if it were three, right? Something along those lines. And then he says, it is what it is, right? Just accept it. Not saying, well, that's incorrect, it's wrong, it shouldn't be so. That does just because you're a hometown fighter, your punches one of your punches doesn't count for three of the other guy's punches, right? Granted everything else being equal, insofar as the punch landed goes or the punch is. But to Andre Ward, it is what it is. Just accept it, right? Just and a lot of you already do because you know you're demoralized. That's why you thought I, I beat Sergey both times, right? I'm demoralized. That's why, you know, I raised my hand after both fights and I and I accepted the gifts without 
any qualms arguing and then I acted as if as if I did win even though the fucking guy retired me right let me take one last sip maybe and I think the more the demoralization was or I mean it's been there for years I guess but what really drove the point home for me right and explained to me why this vicious cycle, right? Why the commentators are doing what they're doing. Why the referee is doing what he's doing. Oh, let's let's talk about the referee for just a second. Right? That point deduction for that little tap. Like, you good, buddy? Let's, let's okay, well, now we're going to split up, right? Now we're going to separate ourselves. One, one of them taps. Yeah, it was to the back of the head, but come on, man. It was just a little tap. No prior warning, not that I remember. But took a point away. Now, look, I think Conseco deserve to have a point taken away for all the holding but that's the holding right not this rabbit tap that didn't deserve a point deduction the holding did right so the referee did a bad job and then he warned Valdez at least twice for rabbit punches as if to show that he's you know impartial but but never took a point <laughs> which proved the opposite right partial impartial like what's right what's wrong what's up what's down what's right what's left nobody knows right because everyone's demoralized and the exhibition if you will of the demoralization was complete when after reading that ridiculous uh decision the scorecards especially the 117 110 or whatever the hell it was the cr and announcing you know still Baldas the winner after he had tested positive for a banned substance and the crowd just roared, right? I loved it, accepted it, just was all about it. I mean, what else can you say? Really? Well, there's really only three things. One more sip of my coffee. Um... Two, I'm glad I didn't stay up for this because this is just what I expect from now on with every big fight. And three, well, I guess I'm going to go plant some trees, fruit trees. Have a good one.